So it's Saturday, and I thought it would be a good day to get my um, raised bed ready. And the chicken is inside of the fig tree enclosure cleaning up. I don't know if she's eating ants or hopefully she's eating all the ants. I have no idea how she got in there, how she's going to get out. But she'll manage, I'm sure. But look at my fig tree is doing really well. I'm real happy. I'm trying not to overwater things, um, but it got so much water over the winter time, and I just, it's been there for almost um, two and a half years, and it goes dormant in the winter. It almost looks like it's dead, but uh, it's it's doing really good. I've never seen the leaves. Oh, she just got out. Um, it's I've never seen the leaves so big. And I've noticed that during um, the month of uh, May, the temperatures are just so perfect that things tend to grow a lot faster. So I try to take advantage of the month of May because the temperatures in the 70s are just ideal for things. And I've been watering just around things. Um, unless I'm watering later in the day like now, I just, I try not to put the water on the leaves if I water early. And then I will hold the, the water down here and let it kind of soak in rather than just um, letting it, leaving it. Sometimes I'll leave it, but I will probably wait until it gets much hotter. I've got, um, I think that's, I think it's coriander. It might be something else, though. I'm not sure. It's coriander. I have a lot of mint. There's just a lot of mint. And I've got some Shasta daisies here, so I like to water those. Because I just like them. They're, they're nice plants. They, they don't bloom very often. But when they do, it's nice to see them. So I'm going to be working over here. And my first thing I want to do is... I got a bunch of these... Um, these were, I think these were um, from a pot farm, and they were just going to throw them out. Um, and they were full of potting mix. And they were just going to toss them. And I got the, um, the, the, the bag. But there's a lot of lava in there. And I don't know if I want all that lava in there or not. There's a lot of different things in there. There's also a lot, look, I don't know if this is perlite or it's a rock, it's a lava rock. They've got white ones and red ones, so I think I'm going to sift those and try to get some of this stuff out of here just because I'm going to add more compost and I, I think there's just too much stuff in there and it's not really helping too much. But I might save those and put them in something else. The other thing I want to do is I've got some um, horse chestnuts here. These are horse chestnuts that I planted about um, two years ago from pods. And I have a pod in the house, but I don't know if it's going to grow or not. I was over at the tree, and I was looking around for pods, and I, they were all gone. But I, I found one. But I'm, I need to move these to bigger pots because, um, like that one, it's just they're just getting to the point where they need to be. I need to upgrade them. You need to upgrade your um, your plants, like your house plants, and just move them into a, a bigger pot. I might move this one into here, and then put this one in a big pot. You don't want to do it too much. You don't want to put them in too big of a pot because you want the roots to grow and establish themselves. Now, I have put these pods straight into the ground, but the only risk you take from putting them in the ground, unless you have them protected, is you can, um, you know, some an animal can eat them or you just forget about them and run over them and, you know, run them over or something and not, you know, not, so putting them into some place where you're, you're sure they're not going to get destroyed or disturbed by an animal or a human. 
is a good idea. This is, oh, I forget the name. It's kind of a licorice -y thing. People make them, they cook them. I don't know what it's called though. I forgot. Tarragon maybe. I think it's tarragon. Let me see. What does this say? Tarragon. French tarragon. It tastes pretty good right now, but it stuff sometimes in the summer, if you don't have the right potting soil, they can get really bitter. So, um, and this definitely needs to be probably moved into something else. The chicken doesn't know about that yet. This, I think I'm going to plant, um, for the chicken, but I'm going to cover it because she'll just eat it if I don't do something. And then I'll take it off later and let her have it, but she won't even let them grow. She'll just eat them. But she, we had, um, arugula seeds and a variety of lettuce seeds, and I just planted them everywhere, and the chicken has pretty much eaten them all. I need to fill this up a little higher with some soil and plant them and then cover it. So that's what I'm going to do today. So I found this block, and I made this rope, and I'm going to make like a makeshift um, tripod. I'm going to gonna work or not I don't know because it's the holes in this sifter are pretty big this will break it up a little bit some of these bigger rocks and these roots put those in the compost pile that's when you need a rotor tiller I had to put a piece of like quarter inch um, fencing at the bottom just so that they can't come up through the ground. I got to be careful of my blister. I finished my book. The ending of the book was a little disappointing. <laughs> and then there were like a hundred pages at the end and it wasn't even the book. It was... And it was another book. I think it's related, somehow related to the story or, you know, a spinoff or something. The, the story was, um, gosh, it just seemed like it ended so abruptly. Like, I felt like it was overall, it was a good book. And it was, you know, a good story, compelling story. You, you kept wanting to re read. There were times when I had to just put it down because... It just, there's a lot of characters in it, and, but it's, I mean, it seems like it focuses a lot more on certain characters and not others, so then you'll be reading through it, and then he'll go back to some character that you really didn't know who they were. There's a lot of comic relief from the, um, from three of the, well, from a few of the characters, but like the, the serial killer. It's very funny. I, I mean, funny in kind of a psychotic way, but but still funny. Just the way that they that he has written them, to the way they think. Well, the serial killer anyway. Then there's also a young boy who's kind of struggling with bravery and what his dad thinks is right and what he thinks is right and how he sees the world and. How the world is to him and so he's kind of you know grappling with those issues while this house is transforming and um he's sort of i would say i would call him kind of the hero of this of it but you know he's he does some pretty heroic things for a for a child and he's pretty funny i don't i mean i, I know that it was in, he's intentionally trying to make this character funny but almost to the point where it's, you know, you just, it's, it sort of distracts you from the story. I think the little boy is the, is, is the son of the country singer. But then there's another woman and she has a, um, an autistic daughter. Um, and so there's just a lot of, there's a lot of interesting characters and, 
situations and I think too it's it's good because you know the people are it's not just a bunch of flat um, people with not interesting lives these are people with more like we have in the real world so that's enough of that Wow, this is really, seems like it's working really good because it's really much softer than it was. There's still a lot of rocks in here, though. I got a new rake, and then my pitchfork broke. See, I got a problem with breaking things. I got a pitchfork, and it broke, and I tried to fix it, and that's as far as I got it's like an antique, and I need a piece of wood or something. It's spring, and it's it's already feels hot to me. <laughs> I don't like it. it. It's not even May yet. So, I don't know. I'm going to melt the summer. I don't know if I'm going to make it. I may have to go... To Alaska or Australia and escape. But I can't because you can't bring dogs to Australia. He seems to like the heat, but I know it's um, hard on him. So we do a lot of water. He plays in the water a lot. And um, I do have a hat that I can wear. The big rocks. Um, God, it seems like there's got to be a way to make this easier. Look, a pine cone. These pine cones just don't biodegrade very fast, and these pine needles are terrible. They're definitely going to make it a little bit better because, you know, the plants, the soil is already bad enough. Don't want to make it any harder. I'm going to plant um, sunflower seeds for sunflowers. I'm going to plant some lettuce. Um, and I want to do it soon, but I, I'm supposed to wait till May. But I may do it. I may plant them, and then I'm going to cover this with some clear plastic so that it... Um, so I can, because if I wait until May to plant things, especially seeds, you know, you're, you're waiting, you can wait so late and, and then it's already getting hot and you run the risk of them just not maturing fast enough in the heat and then you just never catch up. So I think if I can put the, this cover on them it'll keep them warm enough at night and then during the day I can slowly um, remove the the plastic the clear plastic you know until they until it gets warm enough it's not really that cold at night so I would I may not even cover them but I think just having them covered a little bit helps them especially at night just keeping that temperature constant so I may just cover them at the end of the day it's just I got to remember to do it oh look I found some metal I almost stabbed myself I used to have a drip irrigation system in here but it, it went all the way around the outside. I spent a lot of money on it because you have to buy all the little nozzles and connectors. I mean, if you're really going to do it right, you want to get all these things. And it was nice. I could just turn on the, the spigot and then it would water everything automatically. And if I was away, if I went away, because I would go, go fishing or something deep sea fishing I could just leave the little timer on there and it would come on every day if I was just went up to the mountains for the weekend I could leave that on there 
and I wouldn't have to hurry back. Now I just don't go anywhere. <laughs> it's a lot better, I guess. But you know, it's, it was nice because I didn't have to come out here every day and water. You got to come out every night and water because this is the best time to water and you don't want to water, um, you don't want to just water things because at night it's probably okay if it's, as long as it's not getting cold, but you don't want to just water things, you know, especially in, during the day because you, you can damage them. This, I guess they get sun damage, sunburn from the water, the water burns them from the sun. This, this soil gets really hard right here from the roots. I'm getting something out of here though. It's just going slow. She's so sociable. As long as you don't touch her, she's fine. Yeah. How are you doing? How are you doing? You want to help? He always wants to help. He wants to play in the water. One of those two things. And I got most of the weeds already. Um, Gosh, the ants have been really bad. <laughs> I was making icing for these cranberry muffins, and I opened the I opened the um, the powdered sugar, and I added it. I was adding it to because I didn't have I had I didn't have enough powdered sugar, but I don't know if the, the ants were in the old. The one that had already been opened, I didn't see any, <laughs> and I made. I started making the the syrup. Look, there's a worm in there. Some there's a a caterpillar. Some got a worm. Ew! Okay, come here. Come here. Oh, she she went for it. She ate it. Um, but there were. So I opened the new, this brand new packet of powdered sugar and I added it because it was too watery. And I came back a few minutes later because I hadn't mixed it in yet. And there were ants. There was a couple ants growing on it. I just opened that. And I saw there were ants on the counter and I was like, oh great. And usually what I'll do this time of year is I'll buy those little ant spikes because um, I don't like to um, I don't like to spray poison around the house. I mean I'll do it maybe inside or something or inside the cabinet or something somewhere like that or I'll put those little spikes inside as well as outside and because um, I just don't want to I don't want to spray I don't like to put out rat poison either because these animals you know they could they'll just they'll eat them and that's not good but it's unfortunate because we really don't like ants when we were young we were visiting up here and my grandma my brother was craving something sweet so my grandma goes into the pantry and she grabs this and my grandma was not us into sweets she we never had, hardly ever had sweets at her house. She would give us Cheerios. If we got hungry, she'd give us Cheerios. They were farmers, so she always ate very healthy, very healthy lady. And, you know, you, I don't never had, I think she, one, for a while there, I remember we had sodas, but it was always like grapefruit soda or something. It was never, we never, never like, um, colas and stuff like that but um so she hands my brother this box of peanut brittle and my brother was like i don't know he's starving probably we were pretty young probably in our teens our young teens 
grabs his box and opens it and reaches in, pulls out the peanut brittle, and I guess he looks at it, and it was just crawling with ants. And you know, at that point, I sh we should have felt sorry for my grandma because why weren't they spraying around the house or, you know, like, because... I mean, they had a, it was a very clean house. I'm sure she didn't leave out sweets. It's just the nature of this place. Um, there's just a lot of stuff that you got to deal with. Ants is just one of those things. But you know, people, when you get old, you just don't have the time or the patience to deal with every little thing. And having a few ants in your house... Is no big deal, but my brother, when he saw this piece of peanut brittle, it's like it broke his heart because he was so hungry and he's just holding this piece of peanut brittle. Once I get this done, then I can add everything. The sun's going down. I would like to get this. I still have to mix everything together. See, I don't really know if I have to do it that far. This does not look good. It's like got some kind of white mold on it. Ew. Well, hopefully all this stuff will help condition the soil better. That's the thing about growing this stuff. It's it's nice once it's there because you don't if you don't pick it, you can pick it, you know, the next day or the next week and it's still going to be fresh. It's like having a, a grocery store right in your garden. That's what I like about gardening. It's not so much how much you get it's as it is just the convenience of it and the savings. Because you're not having to run out every time you need something. It's just right there. You just have to decide whether you want to use it now. Or if you get too many things, you can... I do have one, a dehydrator, that's the word, dehydrator, I just call it a dryer, for ease alright, is that all I'm going to do, I'm, I'm so done, I'm done with this, <laughs> let's start adding things, I know it's not, perfect but once I add things it's hopefully it'll go it'll go up you know a little bit and I still have to get the compost out of there which is going to be hard I just don't like water thing, watering things too much um, the, per, the persimmon tree does pretty good so I'll water that some years we get a lot of apples but um, like the apple and the plum tree I pruned them I've been I've been trying to prune them back, but I really don't have the hang of it. Pruning is an art form, and um, I just don't have I don't have it yet. It's um so I I I will sometimes not prune things back, and then when it comes time to prune them, I'll just hack them back. I, I the the apple tree was such a mess, and I I thought I had killed it because it was. I, ha I just took so many branches off it, but it was in the winter time. I said, well, it'll come back, and it did. But for a little while there, I was a little bit concerned that it wasn't going to, that it was dead. So I'm just going to add all these things, and then I'm going to probably take some of the soil and use it for my... Um, 
for my horse chestnuts. It's not food, okay? It's not food. No, no, no. It's not food. And when she bites into it, it's not food. It's not food. <coughs> oh, you know, these are actually called worm castings. Not worm casings, worm castings, but I think there's, it's the same thing. I'm just thinking, can you imagine having the job where you, this is your job, is feeding and keeping these worms alive so you can collect their sheddings? It's, I mean, that's, because I mean, that's got to take a lot of time to get that many castings, right? I can't even imagine. Okay, now it's time for this. I don't know. I went to the store and I got, a, you know, I got about as many things as I could find. But we got problems because the pot farmers buy everything. They'll go in there and they'll buy, they'll buy up everything. So you go in there and you just get whatever they have left. Cookies, it's not food, okay? Don't eat that. Leave it alone. Come on. Go. Go. You're on a camera. This I'm nervous about because it's... It just makes me nervous like it's powdered asbestos or something. It's gypsum. Isn't that what asbestos is? It's gypsum? Probably. I should be wearing a mask. But I think it's going to help with the soil. Don't breathe out. And I still got to add my soil. I got this net over the head, over my head here. And every time I stand up, I get caught on it. Yeah, this makes it a lot easier to mix. My poor thumb. My blister. Just gotta take a little break from just raking and mowing my knee and my, and my thumb. I guess I don't need it's time for soil. And then I'm going to go and get my comp. Oh. Look at how red this dirt is. It's really red. So I don't want to put too much in there. I don't know what makes it so red. I don't think clay is like white. It could just be um, a lack of minerals, you know, like, you know how um, the valley has really good rich topsoil? Whereas up here, because of the hills, all the topsoil kind of drains off. So in some places you'll get, you'll have topsoil, but other places, it's just red because it could have just run off from, you know, flooding. So I don't think it's good. This is like a lack of nutrients. This is not a sign of a healthy soil. I'm going to add some chicken manure to it. Um, I could probably go out into my neighbor's field and get some cow manure, but it's, it's a lot of work. <laughs> so, chicken manure it is. I remember one time my dad bought, like, a truckload of chicken manure. Man, it was like, I was like, I can't believe you paid for that. But, you know, 
If you don't have chicken, that's what you do. So I'm going to do sunflowers. I got some flowers. I've got some green. They're like, it's like a pepper plant, but it goes, it has green and red peppers. And I've never really had a lot of luck with certain plants. And I've had better luck with others. And a lot of it just has to do with how much you water and how much you prepare the soil. And also this um, perlite is really important. Because if you don't have perlite, you're going to end up with um, soil that is going to dry out. And you do not want your soil to dry out. Like that's the worst thing that can happen is your soil drying out. And I have never, last year I went to go buy perlite and they didn't have any, they sold it all to the pot farmers. So this year I just found some. At some point I'm just gonna go hide inside and go hug the air conditioner.